Hi everyone, today we're going to create a game called Lightning Run where you have to get to the finish line without getting shocked by electric bolts. Ah, and we're going to be using Scratch to create this game today. And hey, if you're new to coding or you need a refresher, check out my Learn to Code videos on YouTube which will get you up to speed pretty quickly. I also suggest that you follow me and subscribe because I'll be posting videos quite regularly. Anyways, let's get going with today's activity. So I'm at Scratch already scratch.mit.edu I'm going to click on the create button because we're creating a brand new game today. If a tutorial pops up you can exit the tutorial because I'm doing a tutorial today. You can also say goodbye to the cat so I'm going to click on the garbage can right there. Goodbye cat. I'm going to get a backdrop that works for my game. I'm going to get another space backdrop and the one I like for today is called Galaxy. You can choose whatever you want. I like Galaxy. And then I'm going to choose a sprite. See right down here? I'm going to choose a sprite. And the one I want for today, and I suggest that you choose the same today as well, is the beetle right there. Now the beetle is kind of big for my game right there, so I'm going to make him a little bit smaller. I'm going to go to the size button right there and make him like 50%. There we go. Perfect. And now we're going to code it like we did in the last game. You know, right arrow, um, go to the right, left arrow, and all that kind of stuff. So watch how I do that because i got a trick for you. Something that's going to make it a little bit better today. So when the green flag is clicked, no, when the space key is clicked right there. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you at home or at school, wherever you happen to be coding. When the right arrow key is pressed, change X by 10. Okay. When the left arrow key is pressed, change x by negative 10. There's a problem with this. I'm going to show you what that is. Look, uh, just let me finish here. Change x by negative 10. Watch what happens when I go from left to right. There's a bit of a pause there for a second. It's like laggy or something. I don't like that. It's not very responsive. I'm going to show you how to do it like a pro coder so it moves really, really well. Watch, I'm going to get rid of this. So goodbye to that one. Goodbye to that one. I'm going to go get a green flag this time. You'll, you're going to like this way better. And I'm going to get an if statement. So if, right there. If the right arrow key is touched, and the touching is a sense, so it's in the sensing button right there. If the right arrow key, so it's this one right here, I'm going to drag it in there and drop it in. If the right arrow key is pressed, then change X by 10. There will be no lag if you do this. It's very, very responsive. Your beetle is going to go all over the place very quickly. You're going to like this one a lot. But now I'm going to go get another one. If the left arrow key is pressed, change X by negative 10 left arrow key change x by negative 10. watch this um i'm gonna put a forever loop around it and watch the beetle go back and forth really nicely ready left right there's no lag at all this is what pro coders do so that's good except one thing the beetle is not facing the right direction when it's going left I want it to point in that direction. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the motion button again. And I'm going to get this point in direction. Okay. So watch. When the right arrow key is pressed, point in direction 90. See, that's 90 right there. That's that direction. So that's okay. Now I'm going to go get another point 90. I'm going to put it in there. When the left arrow key is pressed, I want him to point in this direction. That's negative 90. So now watch the beetle. He not only moves really well, but he points in the right direction. This is way better. Okay, we're going to use this way from now on. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller. And I'm going to do the up and down arrow key. So I'm going to go get an if statement. Put it inside the forever loop. I'm going to get the sensing. The up arrow key is pressed. You can probably get started on this right now. You know what I'm going to do because up arrow key, the Y is changed by 10. And I'm almost done. Another if statement inside the forever loop. If the um, down arrow key is pressed, you can probably guess what we're going to do. We're going to change the Y by negative 10. Negative 10. And now I'm going to put my directions in there. 
So when the up arrow key is pressed, point in direction, zero. And when the down arrow key is pressed, change y by negative 10, point in direction 180 right there. So now watch, this beetle is gonna move really smoothly all over the place, up and down, really nicely. This is just like a real video game. So, uh, I'm gonna pause there. I'm gonna ask you to um, go to scratch.mit.edu, click Create, because we're creating a new game today. Uh, get rid of the tutorial, get rid of the cat. Go get a backdrop from way down here that you like. I like the outer space one, so uh, that's what I chose. You can choose whatever one you want. And then go and choose a beetle and make your beetle 50%. And then code it so that your beetle moves right, left, up, and down using this code here. It's way better. And that it also points in the right direction whenever it's moving left, right, up, or down. I'm going to leave this code up here for you to look at. I'll make it a little bit bigger even so you can see it at home or school. Right there. Perfect. If you get stuck, look at my code, and um, when you're ready for the next part, I'll be here waiting. All right, so to begin the game, I want my beetle to start way down here in the bottom corner. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the top here and get um, the go to. And I want it to go to negative 200 and negative 120. That will put the beetle down here uh, to start the game. So when a green flag is clicked, go way down here. Let's see where it goes. Ready? Green flag. Perfect. Right there. That's negative 200 and negative 120. That's where it's going to start the game. Now I'm going to go get some lightning bolts. Four of them, in fact. You can get more or you can get less. You can make them bigger or you can make them smaller. It's up to you how hard you want to make the game or how easy. So I'm going to go down here and choose a sprite. I'm going to go all the way down to lightning bolt. Lightning bolt right there, lightning. Perfect. I'm going to move the first lightning right around there. I'm going to go get another lightning bolt, so choose another sprite. Lightning bolt number two. I'm going to move this one right up here. I'm going to go get another lightning bolt. I'm going to get four of them. You can get more or less. Make it harder or easier. Maybe I'll just put that one right there for now. Three of them for now. I might make it harder later on. And now I'm going to get a start and finish um, spot. So watch, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to choose paintbrush again. So click on paintbrush. Choose a color that works well with this backdrop. And for me, I think it's a nice bright red color like that. And I'm going to click on the T for text. And I'm going to write down the word start uh, right there. Start. Perfect. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to grab it. Might be a bit hard to grab, but try to get right onto it. And I'm going to put the start right down there. Okay, so there's the starting line. And now I'm going to go down to the paintbrush button again. I'm going to click it a second time. Click paintbrush again. And click on a color that you like. Uh, and choose the letter T. And I'm going to write down the word finish. And make that a bit bigger. Grab the corner. There. And I'm going to grab that and put it way up here. So now we know what we need to do. We need to get the beetle from the start all the way to the finish without hitting any of these lightning bolts. So um, let's see how that works, okay? Green flag and go. Good, except nothing happens when he touches the lightning bolt. We're gonna have to fix that. We'll fix that next. So right now what I'd like you to do is to have your beetle start at negative 200 and negative 20. That's way down here. I want you to go get three or four lightning bolts, make them bigger or smaller or leave them the way they are, and set up a little bit of an obstacle course or a maze for your um, beetle to get through. And then use the paintbrush button to write the word start, and then use the paintbrush button a second time to write the word finish. And when you're done that, I'll be here waiting for you and we can get going on to the next part. All right? Okay, next. If the beetle touches any of these lightning bolts, I want it to go all the way back to the beginning so it has to start over again. And I want to do a whirl effect on it so it starts to change shape. Um, so watch how I do that. So I'm going to go get a green flag. Green flag. When the green flag is clicked, um, um, if touching lightning bolt, if, if, if. 
So I'm going to go get the if right there. But you know what? I don't want to say if touches lightning bolt 1 and lightning bolt 2 and lightning bolt 3. That'll take forever. So I got a trick. If touching, and I got the that from the sensing button right there, touching. Touching the color. All right. So watch what happens here. If touching the color yellow, the same yellow as those lightning bolts. So if it touches any yellow, it goes all the way back to the beginning. Watch how I get the exact same yellow. Look, I'm going to click inside the color right there. And I'm going to cl click the sampling tool right there. I'm going to touch sampling tool. Go over here and click on the yellow. Now look, this yellow here is the same as this yellow. And I got it by using the sampling button. I'm going to do it again for you. Watch. I'm going to click inside here. Click on the sampling button. Then go over here and click on the yellow. Now I've got the same exact yellow as the lightning bolts. So if touching the color yellow, then go back to the beginning. So I'm going to go to the motion button. Go to the beginning, which was negative 200 and negative 120. <clears throat> also, I wanted to change its whirl effect. So I'm going to go to the looks button right there in the purple. Change whirl. So change color. You could have it change color. For me, I'm gonna, I like the change whirl effect for this game. And I want the computer to forever check to see if it's touching yellow. So forever and ever check over and over if it's touching yellow. And if it is touching yellow, go back to the beginning and change the whirl effect. So I'm going to go get a forever loop. So the computer is forever checking to see if it's touching the yellow right there. So let's see if it works. Ready? Green flag goes to the beginning. Perfect. Ah, he went. Oh, see that? He went back to the beginning and he's changing his whirl effect. Oh, that's great. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to pause here. Uh, I'd like you to code the beetle the same way. So when a green flag is clicked, forever check to see if the beetle is touching the color yellow, the same yellow as these lightning bolts. And if it is touching yellow, then go back to the beginning, negative 200, negative 120, and change the whirl effect. So I'm going to leave that there for you. If you get stuck, look at my code. And when you're ready for the next part, I'll be here waiting. All right, last part. Hey, if our beetle makes it all the way through this obstacle course and gets to the finish line, we want a sound effect like, ta-da! So watch what we're going to do now. I'm going to get another green flag. Green flag. A green flag. Okay. I want the computer to forever check to see if the beetle is actually touching this word finish. So forever again, if touching, so forever, if touching, and if touching, what is finish? It's sprite number two. See that? Sprite number two is the finish. So forever, if touching sprite number two. If touching, and again, it's in the sensing. If touching, not mouse pointer, but um, sprite number two, which is the finish line. So green flag, forever checking to see if touching sprite number two. If it is, let's get a sound effect like ta-da. So I'm going to go to the sounds button right there. I'm going to go way down here and choose a sound. And I think it's in the effects button right there. There's lots for you to choose from. I like ta-da. Uh, here it is right here. Listen. I'm going to use that one. So I'm going to double click ta-da and go back to code. So green flag. Forever check to see if it's touching Sprite 2. That's Sprite 2. If it is touching Sprite 2, play sound ta-da until done. And then let's have it say something like this. We did it, or I made it. And it's in the looks button to say. So I'm going to grab that and put it in here and say, we did it. Yay. And I'm going to make that for four seconds so people have time to read it. So now let's see if I can get through the maze to the finish line. Okay, the beetle should go back to the beginning. He does. Pointing in the right direction. Ah, okay. I'm just going to see if I can get to the finish line without hitting any of these uh, lightning bolts. And, and the beetle says, yay, we did it. Fantastic. So here's the code for that. If you get stuck, please, please take a look at my code. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. I'm looking forward to seeing you at our next activity. You're going to like this one a lot. So I hope you have a great day, everyone. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.